Hey everybody, Josh here. Uh, so I get a lot of questions about these kind of cool looking layouts I make in Excel and just how the heck do I make them? A lot of people are confused because they're used to the grid layout in Excel. Uh, you have cells, rows and rows of cells and columns of cells. And they see that and they think, how can I turn that into this? Um, it's just a little confusing. And the sort of key is that I don't use the grid layout at all. I use a completely different method that lets me be a lot more dynamic uh, in how I do my layouts. and it's a little more akin to using PowerPoint. Um, so let me just break it down for you. I, I took this example here, broke it into pieces, just to show you how I do it. So I start with shapes. Under the Insert tab, there's shape options. Uh, one of them's a rounded rectangle shape. Insert my rounded rectangle, adjust the size using the roundness using this little thing in the corner. <laughs> and then I dropped two more rounded rectangles on top uh, and just made them a slightly darker color. And that's my base for my design. Then I put text on top. In text, you can just go under the Insert tab, the text box, upper right, drop your text in. It's gonna default to this white background with an outline which you don't want. So I go no fill, no line, and then change my text color to white, and then I can just start typing in there. And I've got a free form text box. I can adjust the size. I can adjust boldness, font, all that. That's how I drop all my text in. Get all my text fields in there, easy peasy. But then it gets to the metrics in the charts, and this is where things get a little more interesting. So charts, I think, are pretty straightforward. Um, if you've ever used charts in Excel before, nothing crazy here. But so when you first create a chart, the default styles, they all kind of look like this. Let me just show you. They all kind of have this, one of these many sort of boring generic looks with a white background. and It just, it doesn't work for most designs. So I, when I first insert my chart, I then go and I remove the background, or remove the outline. I then go and I change my font color to match whatever font color I'm going for. And then I click into each element and adjust it to look right. So in this case, I want my legend on the right. So I click onto the legend, move to the right. Maybe I want to change my labels. I can click into my labels. Maybe not show the percentage. Easy stuff. Um, then you can click into each series and change the series colors as well. So that part's pretty straightforward. Where it gets interesting is the metrics. So let me delete this. Uh, how do you put freeform metrics in there like this that I can drag around the page? Um, you can't do that by typing into a cell, it doesn't work. So what do I do? What I do is I take a text box, so I'm just gonna copy paste this one to make things faster. Remove the text, and then go up here, click into my function bar, hit equals, or excuse me, my formula bar. Hit equals, find the data I want, click it, and then, let me change it so you can see it, the data is included in that text box and it will dynamically update as the data updates. In this text box too, I can change the size, change the styles, all that. Really useful. A uh, couple things to keep in mind with this though. If you change this cell reference from exam, from exam, for in this example, data C15 to data E15, it's gonna reset the font styles and you're gonna have to go in and manually change it again. So you see how the font styles just disappeared. So now I have to go in and manually change it again. Um, that only happens if you change the cell reference. So if it's pointed at data C15 and that number changes from 89,000 to 99,000, it's not gonna reset your fonts. It'll just change the number. Your fonts will stay the same, it'll look great. But if you change it and point it to a different cell altogether, you're gonna to have to then go in and manually reset your fonts. It's a little bit of a pain. You can work around it by pointing it at a cell that has the styled font in the style you want already. That's an easy way to work around it, but just something to keep in mind. Another important thing is what you have to consider, what if this is the lowest this number will ever be? What if next week it's 100 million? I need to leave enough room next to it to fit a much larger number, a little bit of extra space here. That extra space is really important so that as your data updates, it doesn't spill over and cross over onto a chart or mess up your layout. Excel's not responsive. It doesn't have a responsive design features built into it. So you kind of have to consider that stuff up front. So you can stack all that together. You can make cool layouts like this that I think of a little bit more in terms of PowerPoint. Like I said before, like you can get a lot more creative in Excel when you think about it in these terms. Um, I think it's one of the most useful, actionable kind of tips I can give someone is to start thinking in terms of freeform moving elements as opposed to the cell grid layout. Anyway, I sent out this template. I'll send out many others like it on the newsletter. I've got a link below if you want to hop on join the newsletter. I would really appreciate it. And I've got much more great stuff coming there. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Hope you all have a great week and uh, more to come soon.